Hello, and welcome to another edition of Community Access. Joining me today is my co-host, Abdul Rashid, and our very special guest today is Greg Davis from Metro Boston Alive Marcus Garvey Center in Roxbury, Massachusetts. Greg, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's going to be a delightful show today. Mm -hmm. I can rest you assured. I hope that you'll be delighted with it. Yes. Let's get started. Can we put up the first photo, please? Tell us what we're looking at, Greg. You're looking at my heart. That's my mother, Doris mm -hmm. Davis. Mm -hmm. Next photo. That's my uh, long, extended uncle. <laughs> it's Marcus Garvey, which we named our, our center after. Okay. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about Marcus Garvey? Well, Marcus Garvey, um, and a lot of folks didn't realize that a lot of our leaders um, always looked or tried to emulate themselves after him. He, um, he, he was really one that, that um, cared about his folks, his people, and that he felt that we should be doing better in America and that we should own things and we should have the same rights as everybody else. And that if that's not going to happen, then we need to go back home where they brought us from. Um, so that uh, just just for camera purposes, when um, Greg is talking, let's have the camera on Greg and then we'll go back to the photo. So for Greg, for those that participate in Black History Month, mm -hmm. is this a person that they should focus on, Marcus Garvey? They always focus on uh, Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. When you talk about uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Gandhi, all of them, he has to come in there. Okay. I mean, in my Without office, that's all you see. He's there everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like we are obsessed with him. Mm -hmm. It's just that, you know, it's what he represents. He represents hope. Mm -hmm. And so the work that I do, um, that's what's needed more than anything else is hope. And you said during our first interview, every morning or every day that you come in, you sort of pay homage. Yeah. In my office, there's a lot of photos. Mm -hmm. and. I go to each one and I bow and I bow and say good morning or whatever, <laughs> you know, because they keep me focused. They keep me in tune with what I need to do. Mm -hmm. so. Now, as I mentioned, um, during our first interview, I visited Greg there at the Metro Boston Alive Marcus Garvey Center, and there was a collage of photos, mm -hmm. you know, folks that were instrumental in helping keep the building alive and keeping the, just the overall concept alive. So what we're doing is we're showing you some photos from the Marcus Garvey Center. So please enjoy them. Next photo, please. That's hope. Mm -hmm. You walk in the door. Folks who really walk through our doors are folks who are lacking hope. And when they look up and they see that, they figure, well, maybe I got a chance. Mm -hmm. Now, we mentioned Roxbury, Massachusetts, yes. where the center is located, and hope. Is there a, a lack of hope in that particular community? We're here in Wayman, and there's Cambridge, there's Dorchester, you know, there's a lot, Brockton, there's a lot of other cities. So when we talk about Roxbury, are they lacking hope, and have, how far have they come as far as trying to get things organized so that people can begin to feel well, it's, like hope is coming. It's twofold. If you're talking about economically, um, we, we still got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Particularly the majority of folks in Roxbury um, are folks of color. Mm -hmm. um, folks who are just at the poverty level. Um, and so with all of the booming construction and housing developments, um, that's bringing in other folks. Um, it's in some ways it's pushing folks of color out. Mm -hmm. um, then on the other side is um, the lack of hope is around folks who have been caught up into the grips of addiction. Mm -hmm. 
be it alcoholism or, or substance abuse or drug addiction, um, where um, because of the lack of insurance or the lack of stay in the detox, which used to be 16 days to 21 days is now five days. Down um, to five? Down to five. And because of the migration from other areas in the state of Massachusetts, the migration has caused other folks to come in and they've taken up most of the beds. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's still folks that are trying to do it on their own. Now, Abdul, you are a pioneer and you know pretty much about the ins and outs of Roxbury. Share with uh, the audience about your travels there in Roxbury, just briefly, if you will. Okay, uh, no problem. My name is Abdul Rashid, and I came to Boston with $4.30 in my pocket, and I was lost. Uh, my family had left me in Miami by myself, and I came here to Boston, and I entered into Archer Park Projects. <laughs> and got stuck in Archer Park projects with the activity of drugs and alcohol for about five years before I found Marcus Garvey. And when I went to Marcus Garvey, I only went there because they told me, because I was living at Pine Street, they told me that if I go to Marcus Garvey, I can get coffee and donuts. <laughs> And that's the only reason I went to Marcus Garvey, for the coffee and the donuts, because the Pine Street, they put you out there early, early in the morning, so I was still hungry after eating the breakfast. So I went there, and um, I went to this meeting. They told me, I didn't, I didn't expect a meeting, but it was a meeting there, and um, the guys was talking about living without drugs and alcohol. And that was so foreign to me. But they were saying some things, their stories was, something that I had been through. I didn't have the solution. But I remember having a bracelet on my arm and I dropped it, it slipped off and fell behind my seat and someone gave me my bracelet back. And I said, well, this is the place for me. <laughs> I did not ever be, be around anyone that would actually find some jewelry and give it back to you. So, and not to mention, I started hearing stories and, and I got clean at Marcus Garvey. Oh, Greg God. Davis actually literally saved my life. And Marcus Garvey was the instrument that really he used to do that. So thank you, Greg Davis. Thank you, sir. That's right. So we're going to talk a little more about the Marcus Garvey Center with these two brothers shortly. We have a second show that they're going to elaborate a little bit more on Marcus Garvey Center. Um, next photo, please. Uh, that one there was, I, I think it was given to me um, by um, folks in the recovery community. Um, they surprised me on that one. Um, and I was very honored to receive it. Yeah. From the Next photo. Well, one of the things that I've always tried to do, because I played basketball through high school and college, but in recovery, um, I started a lot of uh, basketball leagues, and then those trophies are just some of the third generation of young men who are in recovery that I've, I've had the privilege to coach, and those are some of the championship trophies that they had okay. won. Okay. And the next photo, please. And that's the original guys uh -huh. <laughs> that I coach. And if you look to the far left, you'll see me with the little blue shorts on. Okay. That was me. Yeah. And I played yeah. and coached. So I'm really proud of those guys. Are you teaching now, Greg? What's going on with the athletic department now? Um, well, I'm retired in uh -huh. terms of actually playing, but I still um, sponsor a educating the minds and leave drugs and violence behind mentorship basketball league and clinic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, for young young people male and female and then for the older guys is the 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 basketball league which i raise the money and they don't have to pay a dime all they have to do is come and and take some workshops and 
and learn how to be a family. Now with the workshops and uh, the clinic this year, will that take place? And uh, with the workshop, do you have any idea where it will take place and volunteers, what's needed well, for the clinic this year? This year is gonna be very difficult because funding, you know, is difficult. So uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do it. I've been doing it for like uh, 20 years uh, nonstop. Um, I'm just not sure if I'm going to be able to financially be able to cover it this year. So you've been raising the funds by I'm yourself funds, year yeah. after year yeah. after year. Yeah. Where can they send donations if they want to volunteer, if they're an athletic coach, or if you just volunteers in general? What number should they call so they can get in contact with you directly, Greg, mm -hmm. so that we, you can go ahead and get things up and running for this clinic, get some sure. donations in? There's a couple of numbers. Our main number at uh, the center is 617-708-0266. And my cell, which most people get me because I stay on the move, is 617-869-5268. Okay. So those are the numbers for you guys to call if you want to participate in volunteering and donating. I mean, it's a terrific center. We're, we're going to get more into that as we progress with the photos. Let's see our next photo, you guys. Um, <laughs> that one took me off guard this year. Um, <laughs> it's the first time that they started um, uh, this kind of an award, and um, I was really on it to be a recipient of the first year of this this uh, uh, Black Excellence Award for the work that I do in the community, mm -hmm. and especially in, in the recovering community. Yeah. So I'm really grateful and privileged to be a recipient. Yes. Next photo. These are little uh, photos, um, you know, pictures that I put up around the center. Mm -hmm. um, that's the one that men have got to come together and it shows you the generations of men you know, all the way down to their, to their, to their son. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, part of our heritage is that we were one, one unified family and that the men were proud to be who they were and that we need to, we don't have to have those raffles like they got now, but mm -hmm. <laughs> at least we need to be together. But that is coming back in style. Yes, it is. You know, every, yes, everyone's is. getting very Afrocentric yes, these days. I just can't uh, participate. <laughs> in, in I don't have that kind of hearing anymore. <laughs> You're and, not alone. And the next photo. And this is this is one that I I put up because I think that that's what has been missing in our community, mm -hmm. the concept of family of love and caring for our, our siblings and, you know, men for our wives or our women, you know, um, that I, that's part of the hope when you walk in the door. Mm -hmm. I want people to see that, that we still can get back there. Bringing families back together. Yes, yes we can still get back there. Abdul? Yes, um, actually that picture almost brought me to tears because mm -hmm. that is definitely one of the ingredients that's that's missing from the from the hood. As Can we they throw would that say. one back up, you guys? You know, uh, family. You yeah. know the importance of mother and father because the system is basically, literally, separated to certain benefits do not come into the home if the father is there. Mm. Yes. You know, and I'm finding out that you have a lot of fathers and mothers in shelters now. Yes. Because with two income, it's still not enough. No, no. So that's definitely I tear-dropping picture there because I could kind of see what's behind that scene there. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm experiencing it every day by working in the shelter myself. Sure. Thank you. The next photo. Well, uh -huh. of course, you know, <laughs> when they go low, you go high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can say about that. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And the next photo. They call me Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me why. Maybe it's because of our ears are almost similar, but if I could do. But, you know, I'm really grateful 
to have been able to witness um, him being elected a president of the United States, not just once, but twice. Yes. Um, and so, you know, I, I make sure that folks know when they walk through the door, they're going to see the two folks who didn't never have any controversy mm -hmm. throughout their time in the White House. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we need to be proud of because there's always something that folks try to take away from us yes, as a family. Yes. And so yes. that's why they're there. Beautiful yes, climate yeah. when they were in the White House. Yes, Beautiful yes, climate. Yes, sure. I think the climate that we're living in right now yeah. is just a lot of turmoil. Yeah. A lot of turmoil. Yeah. Can I speak uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would just like to say um, President Obama, um, he to me is a combination of Marcus Garvey, W.E.D. Du Bois, Malcolm X, El Hodge, Malisha Baz after taking his heart, uh, 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 Shahada. Shahada. And um, uh, Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. I mean, and Ma uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, on and on and on. It's like God just put them all together mm -hmm. and said, okay, mm -hmm. you Obama. Because I do believe his perspective on life superseded his intelligence. Mm -hmm. So I need to give him a, I definitely have to put a comment on him. Mm -hmm. I just have no choice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The next photo, please. Well, she was a pioneer, but you know, uh, thank goodness that from working hard all day, her feet hurt. Yes. And she <laughs> said, I'm not moving. <laughs> I'm sorry, my feet hurt. He was about the feet, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's about the feet, you know? <laughs> but who would think that just about the feet, what she did? You know, uh, Sister Pox, about. you know, she was like, you know, I'm just not doing it. Take me to jail, but my feet hurt. I'm not moving. <laughs> you know, and um, a lot of our feet should be hurting. A lot of days. our feet should be hurting. You know, yeah. somehow we just kept walking. And she said, I'm not walking no more. <laughs> my feet hurt. So for those of you that do not know, that is Mrs. Rosa, Rosa Parks. Parks. That's Rosa right. Parks. She passed away a few years ago. Yes and a pioneer in the yes. civil rights movement. Um, so yes, definitely, of course, the center would recognize her. The next photo, please. Well, you know, I'm not obsessed, but you know, you, can, you, got, to, you got to- Acknowledge. Acknowledge, yeah. Can't you know. Can't speak on him enough. Uh, Brother Garvey. Next photo. Um, I don't know which one that is, but you know. Um, Outstanding performance in the community yeah. department. Initiative. Yeah, that's, um, that was the first time that they gave out awards um, within the Boston Housing Authority, mm -hmm. which I work for still now. Mm -hmm. And so um, I got that mm -hmm. the first year that they started that. Before we move forward, can we focus a little bit on the Boston Housing Authority? Are there any new projects that you're working on now, Greg? Um, well, at the Boston Housing Authority, I, I, I guess I'm what you might call a fireman. I put out fires. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a special assistant to the administrator. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have uh, a portfolio of both elderly and disabled and family sites. Um, so it probably come up to close to about 80 different sites around the city of Boston. Mm -hmm. um, 
And what I do is I try to make sure I bring in resources to our residents, um, but also encourage our residents not to just make their world within their developments, but, but go outside of their developments and be exposed to things that they would not be exposed to that would empower them. Mm -hmm. And also to try to encourage them to not let public housing be your life. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just a stop mm -hmm. and just move on. And you know, a good example of that was my mom's because we grew up in, in housing development, Franklin Hill. And my mom said, you know, it's okay now, but I'm not gonna stay here. Mm -hmm. And my mother went to college, got a degree and brought a house. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's just a stepping stone. It shouldn't yeah. be anything permanent. It shouldn't be. No. But unfortunately, some folks have had generations of families. I mean, when you think about public housing, it was really for doing a war, mm -hmm. for when the sailors and, 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 you know, the armed forces guys came mm -hmm. home, them and their families just to have a place for a minute. Mm -hmm. But that minute went for generations, mm -hmm. you know, because they had no other place to go. So, yeah. Next photo. Uh, that was uh, from the city council. Um, I, I received that um, on behalf of the work that I do with Metro Boston Live when we had our first banquet, which is leading up to um, this year's uh, reunion that's going to be May 25th. Um, the city council had given us that Metro Boston Live. Can we talk about the May 25th event? The May 25th is a, um, both a fundraiser and a dedication to, um, I was one of four amigos. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm the only amigo that's left now. The other three have, have passed on. And so it's a dedicated dedication to them, but also a time for folks in recovery to, you know, get dressed up. Mm -hmm. Let us treat you like you uh, kings and queens, you know, um, and giving out some awards to some of what I call the unsung heroes who have supported mm -hmm. um, Marcus Garvey Center um, without any recognition, no fanfare. They just did it because they said that it helped save their lives. And, you know, to acknowledge them, which we try to do every year, different folks, and then have fun, party. So it's an annual event? Well, I just started doing this um, over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. But the first one we ever did was in 1988, a year after I founded the organization. The location this year, where is it going to be? It's and going to be where at the, the tickets. Uh, where can they get tickets? Well, they can get t tickets at our center, mm -hmm. which is at 116 Roxbury Street, mm -hmm. or they can call me. Um, it's going to be at uh, the, the, the Grand Lodge, um, which is called Prince Hall, okay. which is at 24 Washington Street in Dorchester, May 25th, um, and it starts at 637. So I want to give you all the cell phone number so that you can contact Greg so that you can purchase a ticket to participate in this fundraiser. As he mentioned, um, he's trying to make sure that the clinic is going to be up and going this summer mm -hmm. for the youth. Um, so his cell number, his direct number is 617-869-5268. Uh, and a secondary number where you can reach Greg would be 617-708-0266. And that is for the fundraiser. It's going to be at Prince Hall at 24 Washington Street. Yes, Dorchester. And that's in Dorchester. Mm -hmm. Yes, so please give Greg a call so that you can purchase your ticket. It's a fundraiser. Even if you're not going, purchase a ticket to help the, to help the cause, okay? So we're going to give you the phone number. We're going to put it up at the end of the show. So that, again, you'll be able to know the dates and you'll be able to get in touch with Greg directly. Next photo. Uh, that was from um, uh, my work with uh, the city of Boston with uh, uh, one of the health agencies, um, just for some of the work that I do. Mm -hmm. 
again, with again. just some of the work that yeah. you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next photo, guys. Uh, I'm not sure which one that's from. Certificate uh, of Appreciation. Yeah. Um, again, you know. I um, just thought it very befitting <laughs> to put these awards up here, these, these yeah. plaques, these awards, yeah. these awards of recognition. So if you can't recall, yeah. they're here. Yeah. They're I'm just archived. really grateful. Yes. You're, you're, you're more than welcome. Yeah. You've, you've, you've done your share and you're still doing your share for the community yes. there yes. in Boston and as a whole. Absolutely. Let's take a look. Maybe we have another recognition plaque here. Who's that? Oh, well, he's, um, he's a gentleman that um, his son is in the fellowship and mm -hmm. he passed away. Mm -hmm. um, he was a supporter of, of the work that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and he was very instrumental in the work that he does in the community. Mm -hmm. He just passed this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, was he the particular gentleman that was working um, before your mom passed the torch? Or no, 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 not no, that one. But no. he will be coming up shortly. I think um, we have a photo. I think now. so. I think so. Okay. Next photo, please. This was from um, a good friend of mine. Uh, it's called uh, Triad, um, and I'm sure that I do know. Brother Haywood and his groups, uh, they gave me that. They, they, they give these awards out every year, mm -hmm. and I was able to get one from them, I don't know, something like maybe 15 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Abdul, you've been knowing uh, Mr. Fennell, Haywood Fennell, for yes. a minute, right? Yeah. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. He's a very good friend of mine. We communicate on a regular basis. Um, he's an author. Yes. And um, he's a performer. Mm -hmm. And um, he uh, has a, this connection at the Strand Theater to get other actors and actresses involved in, in the program. Harlem Renaissance. Yes, he, yeah. he mm -hmm. does a yes. lot. He, uh, he definitely is one of the guys that, you know, I could always say, I know a writer now. Yes, <laughs> yes. that's right. That's right. 